Welcome to the epicentre of extremism, repression and shocking mistreatment of political dissidents in Budapest. This is the infamous House of Terror in Andrasiutska, close to the centre of the Hungarian capital, on the Pest side of the Danube. It first became notorious during the dying embers of World War II when the ultra-nationalist Arrow Cross Party, founded by Ferenc Zalassi, took up residence after they formed a government in Hungary from the 15th of October 1944 to the 28th of March 1945. The party constructed a dank dungeon in the basement of the building to house its victims. Under the Arrow Cross regime, 10 to 15,000 people were eliminated outright and 80% deported. The regime was overthrown following the Axis defeat in the war. However, the terror would not end for Hungary or for the imposing building at number 60 Andrassy Street. The Soviet Union, via its Hungarian supporters, then occupied the building. When they saw the basement, evidently, rather than being repulsed, they saw potential. In particular, the feared AVH secret police, which were similar to the Soviet KGB, set up operations in the basement. In scenes reminiscent of George Orwell's infamous Room 101 from the novel 1984, they installed a variety of cruel cells that were used to break the wills of their political opponents. During the Soviet era, the building's upper floors were occupied by office staff, with desks still in situ for visitors to observe and wonder how many knew of the horrors that were perpetrated beneath their feet. The modern museum iteration features a T-54 tank in the centre court area, with pictures of victims and propaganda posters surrounding it and outside the building is a section of the Berlin Wall and a physical artistic rendering of the Iron Curtain that, in 1946, Winston Churchill said had descended across Europe, dividing the continent along ideological lines. Inside the edifice, in the middle section, is a collection of communist posters and looped footage of speeches and propaganda films with the obligatory rapturous applause. An installation is devoted to the victims of oppression by political extremes, with a strong visual representation of the persecution of religious devotion during the Soviet era. But, as alluded to previously, it is the basement that provides the starkest glimpse into the heinous history of this building. But before you get there, there is a portentous horror show to view first. Access to the subterranean dungeon is gained via one of the slowest elevators imaginable, rendered in black marble and dark glass and in gloomy and foreboding lighting. Whilst in the lift, visitors are played interviews given by seemingly unabashed former members of the AVH, who acted as jailers and executioners to the dissidents in their captivity. Perhaps it was the wording of the English translation, but the sheer inhumanity of the men's testimony is haunting in its brutal honesty, matter-of-factness and deadpan delivery. They spoke of how they would give the condemned a bit of extra dinner the night before they would face their end, and how they simply tore up their final letters to loved ones rather than seeing that they were delivered. It was as if the condemned were just being unpersoned and rubbed out, which, on reflection, they were. On reaching the basement, the featureless monotone concrete and musty air are the first impressions one gets. As your eyes adjust, you start to realise what these rooms are. They're not just prison cells, they are fiendishly designed nightmares made real, and with the sole intention of breaking people and making them confess to some unknown or undefined crime against the regime. They come in different shapes and sizes, quite literally. There is a horrifying, narrow, upright coffin-sized cell that, with the thick door closed, is impossible to sit or even crouch down in. I stood inside and instantly felt a wave of claustrophobia. How long were the victims kept in this? I hesitate to even call a room. To make matters worse, there was an intense eye-level lamp that was hideously bright and burned your eyes with no possibility of relief. There was also a cell where you were unable to stand or even sit upright. The blind panic and nausea must have been all-encompassing. Another dungeon was able to be filled with freezing water up to the waist, so sitting, laying or sleeping were impossible. This was a selection of chambers designed to create utter hell for the inmates. And even the standard cells were horrible, sparse, dark, soul-destroying and inescapable. They had just a tiny bed pushed up against the dank and damp wall and a table bolted to the floor. I heard a guide from an official city tour whose parents remembered the horror of the communist regime in Budapest and she said that no actual executions took place inside the basement but a genuine and extremely crude gallows was placed inside one of the concrete rooms which is genuine and was used who knows how many times. No set of gallows are a pleasant sight but this contraption was something far more sinister than the traditional scaffold you've seen in movies. This instrument of death consisted of a long wooden block with a rope on the top. 
I was told that the condemned would be marched in, their conviction read out to them, then they'd mount a bucket, chair or other basic platform which would be kicked away by one of the executioners as another simultaneously pulled the other end of the rope. The monstrous corner cutting struck me with this device. For me it crystallised the othering and dehumanisation of the condemned. So insignificant they'd been rendered, their captors barely even bothered to give them a professional execution. The final part of the visit features a wall of names and faces, but these were not victims of repression. The open-ended date next to the pictures of some of these people alludes to that. No, these were and are, for some of them are still alive, those who had been somehow part of the apparatus that had maintained the monstrous communist regime. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe. And you can also support the channel on Subscribestar via the link in the description. Thanks for watching.